Hi, I'm Gene Cady. Welcome to this edition of Boilermaker Express. Hi, I'm Jim Barber, your host for the Boilermaker Express with Gene Cady here at Purdue University. And for the next half hour, we'll focus on Boilermaker Athletics with an in-depth look at Purdue's basketball game against Illinois. A different view of a road trip. Ah! Legs! You gotta have those legs. Look out, look how they get back. We gotta push the ball. We're trying. We all know it's very difficult to win over here. We did it last year, we're playing great. And it's the fun of it. We got an opportunity to do something special. Everybody ready? Yeah. Welcome to the Boilermaker Express. Jim Barber along with the coach Gene Cady. This is a huge week with Illinois and Indiana on the docket and in particular an opportunity for our cameras to go behind the scenes and see what goes on on the day on the road. I know having traveled many a time with creative sports that every minute is accounted for with this team. Well I think a lot of people believe that when you're traveling or you're going on these different places you're uh, exotic sometimes exotic places but you don't get to see much of them like Hawaii at December or Puerto Rico like we did or wherever. And then on, in the Big Ten uh, race, you're, you're, you're traveling to these cities or different places where they've got beautiful campus set up, but we never see much of them. People don't really understand that we don't do much except concentrate on the game, have a regular routine we always do. And we'd like to go through that routine about the pregame meal, our meetings, our shoot, shoot around, and all that's highly organized. So the reason we thought we've been winning the road this year, for example, and as you know, we didn't play very well at home a few games. Uh, we sat down and analyzed it, and we felt like that the, maybe the kids at home weren't eating breakfast like they should have, so we made sure that happened before the Penn State game because on the road we always make sure they're together and eat breakfast, and, and uh, we're always with them. The coaches are with the players, and we eat pregame meal. We don't give them uh, meal money, and they go out and get a rental car and do what they want to. They're with us. It's a family. It's just like mom and dad when I was uh, that age. It, uh, we do what the, the, the mom and dad says. And we're together, and it's a family situation, and... Uh, and we think that helps us concentrate better. This shoot around is part of your routine prior to a game. What goes on there? What's important? Well, we change uh, uh, shooting drills or change what we're doing every 10 minutes. Uh, uh, we'll start out with like individual uh, shooting, uh, single line jump shot type of drills, and then we'll go the next 10 minutes. So, uh, uh, post moves or uh, swivel moves for the big people and the the uh, runners we call them or which is our, our perimeter people shoot a lot of three pointers we have certain drills for that in the next 10 minutes uh, we got a, what we call a three ball drill where we shoot free throws and, and uh, shoot jumpers in the sweet spot I call the the uh, elbow the sweet spot and uh, we make sure those guys are making good passes in those drills in any shooting drill there's three things you need good passing shooting and rebounding so we try to do that in all our shooting drills and then the next 10 minutes we'll walk through what the other team does review what we covered the other days you know if we have time to cover it and then the next 10 minutes we go over our different uh, offensive scheme of things and this is all an offensive usually offensive routine on game day Jim and the last 10 minutes we'll have a free throw contest so it's a same routine all the time and the kids have fun at it get into it and they work hard at it we call this when you shoot shoot at the magic level like it's going to be in the game we just don't go out there and start throwing up and casting half court shots and all that stuff because i'd have a stroke if we did that <laughs> i want people to shoot the basketball like they're going to shoot it in the game and get some good out of it because a lot of times we don't have a lot of time for shooting in our regular practices because of classes and study halls and and things we want to do on defense and all the travel on the road i think indicative of your road record seems to work the fact that you have much of your time accounted for, almost all of your time accounted for, and these kids aren't allowed uh, to breathe, I suppose, for lack of a better term. Study hall is uh, two hours a day or, uh, when you have uh, the time to do that, and uh, they're academically, uh, they, they're well organized there. Now, what they use in that study hall sometimes, you know, remains to be seen, and whether they get any good out of it, but uh, that's still there, and, and we try to do a good job with that, and the kids uh, usually do a pretty good job listening. 
Let's talk a little about the pregame meal and, and the fact that you guys get together and break bread. And I, I assume there's a lot of importance in that. Yeah, we're around each other. You learn about the kids, but from their demeanor, uh, whether they're cut into what's going on team-wise. Uh, I really dislike guys that sit around with long faces. You know, this is a family. Uh, you got to be happy with your opportunity being on scholarship, a chance to get a degree, being at a great university. Uh, everybody's paying for your meals, paying for your air travel, paying for you traveling. Uh, a lot of people will come back with you and say, yeah, they ought to be uh, uh, happy. You're making the university a lot of money. Well, I don't buy that. Uh, we're not making that much money, you know. Uh, so it's one of those situations where it's a great opportunity, and I want our kids happy. We call it the happy warrior philosophy, and I see some guys sitting around with a long face, unless we got beat the last game, then I'm going to be very concerned about ever putting him in the game because I don't think he's very team-oriented. I want guys happy and enjoying their, their uh, opportunity they got. When I watch a tape and I watch the bench, somebody takes a charge, somebody makes a great pass, somebody makes a, a tremendous dive in a floor play, and our whole bench doesn't stand up and clap for him or give a cheerleader-type enthusiasm, we run the next practice because, you know, hey, you've you got to be supportive of your teammates. Before the game, in the locker room, what's stressed? What, what lies uh, in, in terms of importance for you? Well, we have a whole thing. I have a great big ink board in our room. One end of our whole uh, dressing room is an ink board where we put up everything that we want done as far as a strategy. It's very simple things, uh, sm small priority things, but it's to the point what we practice during the week and that sort of thing. And then at halftime, we have a regular routine we go through. Bruce has three things he watches in the game. Frank has three things he watches in the game. Jay has three things. Then we'll go over team stuff. And then we go in and present to the players that. And the managers keep track of uh, wars. We have uh, eight five-minute wars. Uh, we break those down in capsules, whether you win that war by so many points or lose it. Uh, then we get a kind of an idea, our routine and a half, what's happening. Are we letting up the first 10 minutes of the half or whatever? And then we keep track of shutouts. How many shutouts do we get in a row on defense? You know, like if you shut down the team seven times in a row, that's a tremendously uh, good uh, thing for your team. And then we have a play hard board. If you come down to our uh, court or down to our dressing room, we have a play hard board where the kids are kept track of offensive and defensive rebounds, steals, uh, post feeds, that sort, sort of things that you media know nothing about. You know, <laughs> all you care about scoring. You're so, right. well, that's all it's in the paper, and you never write about the things that really win games. Although you do have to score, and and uh, it, there's no doubt about that. But we have a play hard board for that. You've said many a times during halftime, it's not a screaming session; it's no. an educational session. Yeah, once to, if they don't box out, if they're not playing hard, I get after them. But usually, it's a, it's a, uh, this is what we got to do to win type thing. Past Life on the Road with Purdue's men's basketball team. We are now up to speed and now up to game time. Highlights of Purdue and Illinois when we come back. Hi, I'm Tanya Stahl from the Purdue softball team. It just doesn't make sense to do drugs. Take charge, think, and make the right choice. You can have a good time without doing drugs. Hi, I'm Alex Coriano from the Purdue wrestling team. Good friends and a good environment are the keys to having fun. When you attend dances and parties, be responsible, be strong, and know when to stay in. Hi, I'm Jimmy Dawes from the Purdue men's track and field team. It just doesn't make sense to do drugs. Take charge, think, and make the right choice. Get one, Herb. Eat him up. Don't let him out back. Go, Dave. Go, Matt. Go, 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 man. Go. All right, here we go, guys. Nothing's changed. Brandon has candy, number 45. Herb has no tree, number 25. Roy has G, number 32. Porter has Garris, number 22. And Chad has Key, number 24. You got to try to come out and dominate the first five minutes of the game. Don't give them the edge. And awareness and intensity were the two things we lacked in our first game. Let's get that established right off the bat. Rebounding the whole game is going to be a key. Box out. Assume all shots are missed. Find your man, screen him off, or for rotating. Get down there and get a guy off. Screen your man off the boards. I can't emphasize that enough. Third, our bench has been the best in the whole league. That should give you a tremendous amount of confidence. And get pressure on the ball at all times, no matter what we're in. We're in frenzy, 
The key to that is pressure on the ball. Don't forget the ball goes to the corner. You've got the X move. If we're in boiler pack, everybody's back in the lane except the guy pressuring the ball. Defensively, key to what we've been doing so far this year, look at the man's chest. He won't sky up on face. Stay down. Play with your feet first and your hands last on defense so we don't get silly fouls. Don't be fouled up on our four defense, 80 feet for the basket. Rebounds, screen first, ball second. Talk and communicate on defense, bump the screens, cutters, see the ball. Close out on all three-point shots. We know they're going to put them up. you got to be ready right away to play D. Offensively, make the easy pass, easy assist. Don't try to thread needles. Don't try to make the hard pass. You know, we want to drive the ball to the basket for three reasons. Forces switches, opens the offensive game for the other players, and it draws fouls. See if they're in and then attack their zone. Last time their zone sort of made us timid the first four or five minutes of the game. Attack their zone, and let's get defensive stops, let's get layups, and not even let their zone get set up. You guys have come a long ways in the last three months, rated seventh of the nation. I don't know that whether we deserve that or not, but the main way to find out is keep getting after folks and keep doing what you've been doing, and, and you'll be proving it. So that's what you got to try to keep in, in uh, context of what it's all about. you made a tremendous move in the polls. If uh, if we play great tonight, great the next game, it just snowballs on you when you get to the NCAA. Your confidence level is at the best. That's where we want to be. Coaches, you got anything else? The no, game no. we let go that we all should have won was Illinois, right at home. See, the one, we don't want to lose a title because uh, because of that game. You get the game back tonight by winning it. And you guys got to understand, as Coach said, you're ranked seventh in the nation. You're everybody's meal ticket to the tournament now. So they're going to be extra motivated for us. Let's go. Get all the rebounds. Everybody with the line. Go. Let's go. Go, fellas. Let's go. Everybody in. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? Everybody ready? Together. Go. They can't beat us, fellas. Let's go. 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 Jim, let's talk about first half action against Illinois. Good inside play. Guards were able to find the guys inside. Your, your interior offense was strong. Well, it was. We got uh, Brad Miller got 10 points off the bench the first half. And uh, what I liked was we finished the half ahead of them. We had, were down and they played uh, uh, kind of lethargic there for about five, six minutes, and they got ahead of us. So we came back and got the lead at half. And I thought that could have been the turning point of the game. A lot of ebb and ebbs and flows, I guess, in the first half. They'd get a run going, you'd get a run going, and, and your finish at the end of the first half, as you mentioned, was was important. Yeah, and I think that uh, you know our senior just have been unbelievable this year at the leadership and the way they've stayed consistent, kept their composure and not panicked, and, and they've done a great job on in the team defense area. So Roy Harrison gave us a big boost, having his career high uh, of of, the, of his uh, since he's been here, and I think that. Uh, you know, he's just gaining more confidence each game, and I'm really happy to see him playing happy. Don't let it slip, fellas. We got to go out this second half. Cut in, baby. Cut in. Shut everybody down. Everybody got to pull together. We got to get some charges, man. Somebody step up and take a charge. Fundamentally sound, man. That's what's going to win it. Fundamentals, man. Shutouts, threes the most. We got to get that changed. Post feet, nines better. No charges. We rebound is poor. We're standing. They got nine offensive rebounds. We got four. Lockout. Sprinting, get out of the break. We need more. We started out good. First part of the half, we started good. Got some layups. Weak side defense is poor. Get off on the, on the when you're when uh, uh, no trees over here. Herb, get off. You would have had two more steals if you would have. Screening's okay. Spacing's okay. Pressure the ball. You must contain. Keep the ball on the side. Uh, bench decorum is okay. Mostly men are prepared to play. Not where it needs to be. Got to read for 20 more minutes. Tough on the boot. Intensity on defense is poor. Organization judging the break. We have none. Spacing. 
One thing, guys, on our, in our offense, and we did a good job when we got a little bit later, we're going double low again. We're getting stuck in that. When you pass it, whatever, you screen the passer, right? Now, Brad Miller, Brandon Bradley, if you come here, where are they guarding you? I take you two shooting that shot all day long. But you got to be ready to shoot. Now you shoot it and you make it twice. Now what do they do? <laughs> now they come here and then I'll take Roy Harrison, and Justin Jennings, and our foreman, sealing people's butts and throwing it over the top to them. Got to have spacing. Yeah. I know they can't stop us inside. Don't throw hope passes, guys. We threw some hope passes. Don't right. throw hope passes. Swing the ball and you can get it at a, at a better angle. Little so mental that's mistakes. Smart. That's all. So that's you got to be sharp mentally. We can't give them little layups when somebody back picks you, no one shows. Just little things. You can win the game if you're mentally cut in. We can't give them little little things that because you don't cut. You. Don't let this slip away, guys. You can this is your game. This is a game you you should win. Take it. Play defense like you played defense at home the other night. Let's go now. Game Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Bench, let's go again. You did a good job. Let's go, Let's go Alan. Let's go. Put it Start the same way we start today. Let's go. Strong, Alan. Let's go. Good job, Alan. Let's go, Roy. Good job. Way to respond. Hey, that dude got like a funny shot. He's going to shoot like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. some control in the second half, got it up to a double-digit lead. What was going on at that point? Well, our kids were playing better defense and stopping them. I think we wore them down. I think our depth got to them, and I just think that uh, our bench was really great again, and I can't say too much about Justin Jennings and Brad Miller, Todd Foster, uh, the way they've come off the bench and played. How about Roy Hairston's play? Well, he was super. I tell you what, I'm so proud of him. Like I said before, I think that uh, uh, when he found out that we were for him and uh, this is a family here, he relaxed and started playing good. I watched his second three, and I watched your reaction after you hit it. It was uh, it was priceless. Well, we had said that you make one of those, you can shoot another one. So it, he did, and he did. So you know, now he's got a chance to shoot three in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Any surprise that Illinois made a run at the end? No, we've had that battle here every time we've been here. I was surprised we won. <laughs> That's what I was surprised. So we've had some heartbreakers here, but thank goodness we pulled this one out. And Foster had a big three down the stretch, plus Roy's uh, inside offense. Yeah, that bucket he got there to last was a backbreaker. I think that the kids really looked inside. Uh, too bad uh, some of our guys got in foul trouble, but you know it worked out okay. You know we went the right uh, way we did over here. Uh, they they could have easily lost the composure and lost the game. We, we lost it here like I think three or four years ago, two years in a row in overtime. So I didn't want that to happen. Finally, two wins in a row here in Champaign, which as you mentioned is a difficult place to win. Yeah, you know what's amazing about this series was I think 73 all in the history of both schools, and uh, we got a one-game lead on them. So that's just amazing. That's the way it's been since I've been here for 16 years. A dogfight every bat, almost every game. We had a couple blowouts, but uh, we always had practices after those blowouts, and it seemed we got <laughs> seemed like we got things ironed out. Let's get the P next. Let's go. No practice tomorrow. Let's go. Together! We attack!
Welcome back to the program. Jim Barber along with the coach Gene Cady later this afternoon for many of the stations that are watching Indiana in Bloomington. Wow. Well, it's always a, you know, a, an opportunity to go down there, especially in our situation. We got a chance to win the league to do something, uh, you know, it's a road win. And uh, um, beyond what other people think, uh, we don't get all that carried away about who we're playing. I think it's when you play people. And, and uh, our fans get all fired up about beating Indiana twice. Well, if you don't beat some other people like 14 times during the league uh, play or 12 times, uh, you're going to be out of the league race. And that's what our goal is and to be our best. So, hey, we, we don't especially look forward to going down there. I don't look forward to going to any, on any road trip in this league, but you got to do it and you got to play good in order to win. All right, we wish you luck there and we'll talk to you next week as we get ready for more basketball. Thank you. Stay on the high side of both of them. You're here, you're on the high side up a little bit. Bucket man's got to do a good safe. job. If he goes like this, you're fine. You've got a bucket man with our butt to the base. Butt to the base, so you can see. See both. Right. See both. Scoot back even more. Right there. Just let him... What happens at the end of the play if we don't get the ball to Herbie? Oh, the man took it out, screened out. Screened out for that man. And they might switch that, but if they switch it, Herbie's got to get out, and the guy at the screen's can come back to the ball post, right? Put them on defense, you move the ball to the weak side, and you make ball reversal, and that's even better yet. So the start of the play is good, but sometimes if we're behind, the end of the play is better because you make them play D, we don't shoot the ball quick. I want you to catch the ball right here, babe. So you got a chance to throw it down. Now, Brandon first for the dump, then you got to dribble over and get it to the uh, corner. Hoggy, cut to the clock, corner. Stay there, stay there. Now go. Yeah. Intently doing going over ticket list. Okay, that gentleman's okay for two. And they may be up high. And they will probably be up high. There's just nothing we can do about it. So let me handle mine. Oh, you handle your diet. Carol, look. Start no. all over. You get the game back tonight by winning. You're everybody's meal ticket to the tournament now. You can win the game if you're mentally cut in. Good job, fellas! Man, that was that was true Big Ten basketball. No.